Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Phyllis Summers is determined to improve her children's life. The Young and the Restless recap for Tuesday, September 12, 2023, features a significant issue for Summer and Daniel as they discover their mother's plans to interfere in their lives. Highlights from Young and the Restless Heather also hints in this episode that she may stay in Geno City. Tucker arrives without Ashley, which worries Jack and Abby. Audra attempts and fails to elicit an emotional response from Tucker, while Billy apologizes to Jack and Diane. Let us now delve deeper into what occurred. The Restless Young Meddling over lunches at Society, Mother Summer, Allison Lanier, and Phyllis, Michelle Stafford, recalled her recent trip to Milan. She claimed to have moved on, but Phyllis refused to accept the fact that Summer and Kyle were divorcing. Summer pressed her mother to swear not to try to reconnect her with Kyle, and Phyllis stated that she was proceeding. Phyllis shifted the conversation to Daniel and Lily, but she did hint Heather was in Geno City. Summer insisted on her mother staying out of it as well. She didn't want Phyllis to meddle in her or her brother's lives. Summer stated that she felt happier and freer than she had in a long time. Summer switched the conversation to Phyllis' life, and Phyllis informed her daughter that the job with Adam had fallen through, which worried Summer. Summer was concerned about her mother's interfering when Phyllis acknowledged that she had a lunch date with Heather. Daniel and Heather had an unpleasant encounter at Crimson Lights. However, as they talked, the tension dissipated. Heather eventually revealed that her life in Portugal changed when her romance there didn't work out. Heather also mentioned that Lucy seems to wish the three of them to be a family again. They agreed to work together with Lucy. Heather revealed that she did not want to return to Portugal. She wanted Lucy to spend more time with Daniel, but Daniel advised her to think about what was best for herself as well. Summer came in as Heather was leaving, and she and Daniel talked about their mother's involvement. Neither of them were very interested in what their mother desired to happen in their lives. Daniel stated that things were going well with Lily and that all he wanted was to be friends with Heather. Summer told her brother that they had a significant problem with Phyllis trying to repair their previous connections, so they agreed to put a stop to it. Diane was given an invitation to their wedding reception by Jack. She only needed to choose a date. He proposed early October, and he wanted to handle the details. Billy recalled a disagreement with his brother regarding Jabot. He apologized to Diane and Jack for not supporting her working there. Billy admitted that he'd mistakenly believed Tucker and Ashley's story, and he began to succumb to his dark side. To celebrate, the three decided to go out to lunch together. Audra tried to talk to Tucker, Trevor Street John, in the GCAC dining room, but he was uninterested. She was apprehensive, though, about Tucker's appearance as hell. He stated that he had overestimated Jack Ashley's dedication. Tucker finally admitted that he and Ashley had a fight. Audra was not convinced. Nonetheless, Tucker refused to confide in his erstwhile partner in crime. Tucker remembered his and Ashley's wedding night upstairs. He remembered his honeymoon with Ashley, and she wasn't pleased. Ashley revealed to her brother that she was thinking about him, and she told him about the time she left Jabot with all her patents and went to Paris. Ashley recalled making up with Jack in that restaurant during their dispute. Tucker was depressed in his suite. Tucker went to society and was impolite to Phyllis. Tucker greeted Heather as she entered. He informed her that if she continued in Geno City, he would want the services of a competent attorney. When Jack, Diane, and Billy entered the GTAC, they asked Tucker where Ashley was, but he didn't respond. Audra attempted to flee, but she refused to inform them. Jack dialed his sister's number and left a message for her to return his call. They pondered whether the whole affair was a ruse, but Diane pointed out that Tucker appeared truly unhappy. Diane had left and Jack had inquired about Billy's sudden change of heart. They discussed the situation and Billy offered to assist Diane in becoming acquainted with the family company. Jack was content and they parted on a high note, but neither appeared to believe it. Diane ran into Abby at Chancellor Park. She praised her uncle's new wife for saving her mother's life, and Diane replied that it was something that anyone would have done. However, Abby pointed out that Diane had done it after everything Ashley had done. Abby observed her mother letting go of her rage and hatred while on her honeymoon in Paris. 
Diane hesitantly informed Abby that Tucker had returned, all alone. Abby was concerned about her mother, and she left a voicemail for Ashley. The young and the restless spoilers claim that Sally Spectra and Nick Newman's romance isn't advancing for a variety of reasons. Sally has yet to accept to move in with Nick. Thus, this may become a major plot point in the future. Adam Newman can see Sally at the GCAC whenever he wants because she has a suite there. If the Lie and R writers wish to carry the plot in this way, it will be easier for some cheating to take place in Sally's own area. Sally and Adam appear to be on the verge of a hot reunion, especially following their scenes together in the September 11 episode. Sally put her hair down and made herself presentable for Adam when she knew he was at the door. Sally evidently cared about Adam's opinion of her beauty. It was evident that Sally wanted to look attractive when Adam entered the room, and if she wanted to look attractive to Adam, there must be something between them. Sally has also expressed worry for Adam recently, not to mention that she jumped to his defense and chastised Nick for acting as if the loss of Ava Spectra was karma. The love triangle is now tilting in Adam and Sally's favor, especially because we know Sally's concerns about Nick working with Sharon Rosettles will get stronger. According to the Young and the Restless teasers, Adam will take advantage of this and try to draw Sally closer, while Nick is busy with Sharon at Kirsten Incorporated. Because things are falling into place for Sally and Adam, it's only a matter of time before they succumb to temptation. That might pave the way for Nick to make a surprising discovery in Sally's apartment at some point. Will Nick interrupt Adam and Sally's hot reconnection? Could Nick be terrified if he discovers Sally and Adam beneath the covers? According to the young and the restless spoilers, Nick and Sally's love appears to have an expiration date that is quickly approaching, so remain tuned for any news about Sally's future. According to the young and the restless spoilers, many fans have been hoping for another special crossover event with the bold and the beautiful, particularly one involving Sheila Carter. There's no reason Sheila can't return to Geno City now that she's alive and out of prison. It'd be nice to have Sheila Carter return to Y&R, and she has a perfect reason to do so right now. Sheila is desperate to connect with her biological son, John Finn Finnegan, as well as her grandson, Hayes Forrester Finnegan, on B&B. &B. Steffi Forrester, on the other hand, moved Hayes and her daughter, Kelly Spencer, out of the country for their own protection. Finn is aching for his family while Jack Lamithson's Wood is on maternity leave at B&B, &B, and he's upset at Sheila for blowing things up. In other words, Sheila could benefit from a different family member right now. That takes us to Sheila's biological granddaughter, Lucy Romilotti, who may be relocating to Geno City permanently. Daisy Carter, last played by Yvonne Zima, is Sheila's daughter, thus it's simple to see why Sheila might be drawn to Lucy. Maybe it's time for Sheila to find Lucy and play up their grandmother-grandchild relationship. As they fight the menace, Daniel Romilotti Jr. and Heather Stevens, Vale Bloom, may become closer. Sheila is capable of doing horrific things, therefore Heather and Daniel would never let her near Lucy. Unfortunately, Lucy is at an age where she is likely to rebel against her parents, so she may find Sheila appealing. Lucy might be deceived by Sheila's caring grandmother persona and jump to her defense. If B and B and Y and R staged a crossover event like this, it could bring Phyllis Summers into the tale, along with other characters who would struggle to preserve Lucy. People would be terrified of Sheila's presence, since she is terrible news. Sheila could also square off against Lauren Fenmore Baldwin, as the two were once strong rivals, so there would be lots of opportunities for drama with Sheila around. Do you believe Sheila Carter should return to Geno City? Do you have any more ideas for crossover events? According to the young and the restless spoilers, Sheila will continue to cause havoc on the bold and the beautiful, but keep tuned for details on whether she will return to GC. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.